This podcast is sponsored by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash media hole to get your free 30 day free trial and get one free audio book. You can get over 180,000 audio books to choose from and you can cancel anytime you want. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash media hole. Thank you so much, Audible, for sponsoring this podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to the Media Hole Podcast. This is a weekly podcast in which me and my lovely boy, Ian. Say your name, Ian. I'm not your boy. Fuck you. Well, we I'm talk, not your boy, man. We talk news and media and comics and television and movies and all sorts of things and video games and anime. Did I forget something? Uh, One Piece specifically. Uh, I think that's covered under anime. No, it, it transcends comics. genre. <laughs> You mean media? We make fun of comics. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, without, do, do you do you have anything to talk about of the week that was exciting that happened to you? Because uh, no. yeah, we've both kind of been stuck inside. <laughs> no, nothing at all. All right. Oh shit! Just bumped the mic with my phone, like a real professional would. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about the news. <laughs> The news! Alright, the first two announcements from Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest came this week. Pretty great announcements, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't even... I miss them, I guess. Alright, the first announcement, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. It's a full remake. Yeah, I didn't miss it. <laughs> okay, full remake I, of the first two, <laughs> two games by Vicarious Visions, which is the developers behind the recent Crash Bandicoot remakes and the PC port of Destiny 2. They did the PC port of Destiny 2? That's weird. Yeah. Well, Activision. Um, I guess, well, I guess. They probably initially worked on it while De Bungie was making the rest of the shit. Yeah. And then now, I don't think Bungie has any help from anyone doing anything. They're all on their own. Yeah, they, but they developed the, like, the actual port. Um, yeah. Apparently, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is the second best game of all time, according to Metacritic. Because I think the most people would just tell you, yes, that game is good. Pro Skater 3. Yeah, I know. It's just like, for whatever reason, Pro Skater 2 is the second. It's like Ocarina of Time Pro Skater 2. <laughs> <laughs> Bad game, good game. Hell yeah. Um, it includes all the maps, tricks, and skaters from the Ridge. Uh, and like Also allows you to revert to continue combos. I noticed that yeah. being shown off in the trailer. It has the, Almost. It has the tech that was introduced. It, was, it has the on-board tech... That was introduced in Pro Skater 4. Yeah. And Pro Skater 3. You, I don't think you can get off your board, though. No, yeah. It's, it's perfectly fine, because Pro Skater is a session game. You yeah, go through all four, you know, two minutes to do a sweet run. It's all four Pro Skaters in terms of, like, gameplay style. But it's the first in two levels, in terms of content. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tony said that uh, if this does well, he'd love to do 3 and 4 as another remake. I think... I actually talked about this with my friend uh, when we when it got announced. Yeah. I think three should be a DLC for this game. That would yeah. I, I think four would be its own. Would be a standalone. Yeah. Because four is huge, but one, two, and three were games that you could beat in like two to three hours on your first playthrough. Yeah, but like um, one, two, and three are also all the session style, whereas four was the free roam style. Yeah, that's why it's a separate game. Yeah. But, like, 1 and 2 being mashed together, 3 isn't big enough to be a standalone, so I think an expansion or DLC for the for this new remaster would be good. And then 4 is big enough to be a standalone. They, they implied then, that 3 and 4 and would be a standalone. And then Nathan. Yes. Underground. Underground Trilogy. I think it would be Underground 1 and 2. If they were going to keep putting games together. Yeah. Underground 1 and 2 together, American Wasteland by itself. Yeah, but include the content from Skateland. Skateland. Oh, American, American Skateland, Skateland. Which was the but DS that's the, version. That's the, that's the world where, ben, where Bam dies. We well, yeah, that's the Bam realities. dies timeline. Yeah, my friend sent that to me after this. it was announced, and I'm like, Bam dies in this timeline. <laughs> or no, Bam dies from his injuries from Tony Hawk's Underground 2 is always the funniest no, thing in the Thug world. No, it's Thug 1. It's, it's if Bam wins, it goes to Thug 2. If 
if Tony wins, but Bam doesn't have. There's no competition in Thug One. No, for but Bam that's to the implication. That's what the timeline says. It says. It says the timeline is Tony wins, go to American Wasteland. Bam wins, go to uh, go to Thug Two, or. Tony wins. How can it go to Thug 2 where t- Thug 2 is the one where they're competing? No, they compete in all of the games. No, they don't. <laughs> no, no, that's the... No, Nathan, that's it the goes timeline's one implication. to four. No, it goes one to four. It does not. Hold on. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> it does, you're right. That's so dumb. And then when Bam dies goes, of his injuries, that's f- when American Wasteland becomes American Skateland. Yeah, it, it goes... To- it goes... One, two, three, four. Tony never meets Bam, goes to five. Because the implication is that Bam is the Virgil. Bam is Virgil. Yeah. Bam wins, we get Underground 2, and then three shitty games. Yeah. Um, Tony wins, we get American a great Wrestling. game. Yeah. An okay game. Which game's the okay game. one? Project 8. Project 8? Yeah, that game's meh. Yeah. But Proving Ground was bad. I would say it was a late PS2 era game, late PS2, late X- Xbox era. Mid that was it was like mid PS3. Shoot. I got it on the PS2. Yeah, oh, maybe it came out for PS2, PS3? but it was like it was like twenty, it was like two thousand nine, two thousand eight. I had it, it on PS3. They should, have, they, they should have just made that game purely for a console because it looks bad. Yeah, because Project Eight was the cross gen one. It came out for both PS2 and PS3. Uh, but then, but then, Proving Ground came out like two years later, and they still made a PS2 version. All right. Yeah, I played both of those games on PS3. <laughs> Offshoot timeline where Tony gets really into racing for some downhill reason. jam. Yeah. Yo, downhill jam's underrated, but the fucking console version, like I played the the DS version of uh, downhill jam. Which is pretty good, but the console version allows you to like beat the shit out of people on the way down. It's really funny. <laughs> but on the DS version, you can't. And I was like, "That's so weird." Yeah, well, I don't know why Tony and Bam duel for supremacy. They're like not even in the story for Underground, pretty much. Like they show up to be like you know the pros. Yeah. Actually, no. Bam only shows up three onwards. Yeah, because he was too young for one and two. But yeah. I guess Bam shows up during the Tampa Am where he makes you do tricks on top of that fucking ramp in the middle of nowhere and you can die from uh, crocodiles. Yeah. Alligators. Yeah. I mean, everybody does fight to get you signed and Bam works for Element and Tony works for Bird, yeah. Birdhouse. Yeah. Well, Tony is Birdhouse. Yeah. That's his brand. But, uh, yeah, it looks dope. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have written here, you will be able to pretend you're a Superman on September 4th on your PS4, Xbox One, or PC via Epic Game Store. Um, what was brought up in my Discord when we were discussing it was, why did, when did it become that, like, did you always think of, um, Goldfinger when you thought of Tony Hawk before? No, but be- that's because it was the Pro Skater 1 song. But I've picked up it the be- vibes... Yeah, it became like the meme, so it's yeah. like, yeah, you hear Tony Hawk, you say, here I am, doing everything I can, doing all... The Tony Hawk <laughs> documentary is called Superman. Pretending I'm Super. I'm a Superman. Yeah, but like, I fucking... You, it, it, because of... Like, when I used to think of that fucking game, I thought of like fucking 96 Quite Bitter Things by CKY. Uh, is that... Uh, see, I got into the franchise at 3. I think that was in 3. I'm gonna look now. But when, honestly, but like when that, I think of Tony Hawk, because the one that I've played the most is American Wasteland, I just think of um, Holiday by Green Day. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a reasonable one. Yeah. Um, Anarchy in the UK for Pro Skater Four. Ring of Fire for Thug. Thug Two. Was that Thug Two? I thought it was Thug One. Yeah, that's my B. Thug One. Had like more of a hip hop thing to it. Yeah, you're right. Um, oh yeah. So I know some. It was in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Three, where ninety six quite bitter things was in bitter beings. Wow, I've been saying the fucking song name wrong the whole time. Damn, fake fan. No one's ever corrected me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of CKY. I only like that one song. Um, I was gonna say though, uh, that some people may be thinking, didn't they already do a remake of those games? 
they did, and it sucked. Yeah, in 2012, uh, they did Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD, which was a an Xbox Live Arcade game that was a remake of uh, levels from Tony Hawk 1 through 3, but many features were missing. The physics, graphics, frame rate, and the soundtrack were all found to be lacking, and that game was delisted from all digital stores in 2017. So Activision really doesn't want you to remember that game exists. This game, very clearly more of a remake, very clearly like higher budget in every way. Yeah, Tony Hawk is actually involved and it's not a cash grab. Well, by, he was uh, involved Activision. in that game and in 5. It's just like uh they were really bad because it's either Robomoto is a terrible direct uh developer or alternatively the, the fucking Activision just didn't give them the time or money to make either of those games the way they wanted them to be. I, I would say it's that one. Activision seems to be very stingy with money. Yeah. If you're not if you're not Call of Duty or Guitar Hero in the mid to in the early 2010s, who gives a fuck about what you think? Yeah. <sighs> yep. Sad day. But hey, new Tony Hawk shit. If this does well, we'll probably get more. Um, and Vicarious Visions is actually a great developer, so... Let's get fucking Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, but good this time. <laughs> no, I feel like if they do a new game, if they if they don't do more remakes of the classics, which I think they probably will because easy money, um, <laughs> yeah. like, straight up just remake them with... Make all of them look this good, and I will buy them. I will literally buy them. I will buy them if you do that all the way up to American Wasteland. Like, I'll just keep will... paying money. Uh, yeah, make a and then make a. Go I, I'd fucking probably play a new project date to be honest. Like, yeah, I'm such a hoe for nostalgia. Yeah, like no, I, I would. I probably wouldn't play a new project eight because I felt that project eight was the first one that was a step backwards in s certain ways. Um, but uh, I'd play them all again up to fucking American Wasteland with fancy graphics. And then what I want is something that is an evolution of American Wasteland. I want to see the next game. That, that takes the next step up. I want to yeah, see... Or yeah, fuck Project A. I want to see fucking... Evil. I want to see <laughs> Earth Wasteland. We're going to get... Pro this is going to be the new... the Just like how fucking the... How Capcom is going to retcon RE5 and so 6 doesn't happen, but 7 makes more sense to happen. We're going to get Tony, up to Tony Hawk's American Wasteland and then there will be now a new Tony Hawk 8. Yeah. Again, call it, call it, add, make a new Wasteland style game and go, give it, either call it American Wasteland 2 if you're unoriginal, or like Universal Wasteland. Or, or American Wasteland 2, because Tony Hawk's Underground 2, or we have it, or Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk uh, American Wasteland Pro Skater. Tony Hawk's Future Wasteland. They just Call of Duty Modern Time Warfare Travel Plot. This. Future Wasteland. Mm. Or no, it because of the events that happened in uh, American Wasteland, all skateboarding is now illegal. Yeah. And the only way you can skateboard is on some sort of network that is un unseen. Like, it's it would be underground for the third time. <laughs> I th see. My vibe is now that I was like time Tony travel Hawk's plot. Three is about killing the president. Yes, that that would be cool. I'm into that. Also, time travel plot though, where you're in the same open world, but doing things in that world would send you backwards or forwards in time, and you'd see that map maybe ten, fifteen times in all the different timelines. Uh, sure. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot. I know. <laughs> maybe not ten to fifteen, but I was just like, yeah. what's a good number to? pull out of thin air and yes you will it's, it was like sonic it's tony hawk generations it's like yeah. sonic generations yeah. where you go with a younger t you get a more polygonal tony hawk or yeah like a fucking photorealistic one and tony has to team up with all the tonys of all the different timelines because all of the bams and all of the different timelines have created a plot uh like the like all the reed richards of all the timelines but it's all the BAMs, and they all want to make a Universal Destruction Tour. No, uh, they think BAM... You think BAM is the villain, but actually he's just a pawn for the, re pawn for the real villain. Travis Pastrana, who wants all <laughs> skateboards and bicycles to be removed from the X Games. So final, we get nothing but motorcycles and dirt bikes. The final boss. 
is uh, 26 Eric Sparrows on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring back Eric Sparrow, but still make him an unlikable dickhead who steals your shit. Yeah. No, but he should be like, they they need to fucking Griffith Eris, Eric Sparrow, and I know I'm not the first person to make that bit, but I want him to have the fucking, the, the egg of the king, the red bail it, and make a deal that like fucking opens up the ethereal dimension. Like, I want Eric it to Sparrow get that. Eric kills the entire gir- girl team. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't also, let's not make this game woke. I want this to be as awful as it always was. <laughs> I want you to go and impress chicks by skateboarding in front of them. The only difference is, is you pick up one dude. Yeah. That that that's all. I'm into this. Oh, uh, oh, I could talk about Tony Hawk for six hours, and we will. No, I don't. Want <laughs> Donate to. to our Patreon to get the full six-hour Tony our Hawk Patreon episode. We don't have. <laughs> you gotta get you gotta. You can make more breakdown videos to pick that fucking to get a Patreon. I will. No. Um the next day Jeff Keeley made a second announcement, which he said was the most important one, which is kind of right. Wrong. Incorrect. Was this about Unreal Fall? Fo- Unreal 5? Engine five. Cool. I saw the worst take ever about this. Really? What's the worst take about it? That just that um the uh it was, was it the by, PC gamer um, one? No, it was by Internet Funny Man on former animator, or current animator, also game designer, Chris O'Neill. Yeah. Or uh, ONENG. He was saying, because, you know, it was a showcase and they showed off a lot about the graphics. Yeah. Because it was a console, they kind of want to push graphics. Yeah, it's, and well, it's a new engine. That, he watched the entire thing and was like, oh man, it's another going to be another ga- thing where all gameplay is super boring and bad, but the games look beautiful and that's supposed to make games good. But he missed the point where they said that Unreal 5 is going to be super fucking easy to work with. Yeah, and they were like, oh, do we want it to be the most easy to fucking adjust games engines over. So, because of those goddamn magical triangles, this game is going... You can, you're you going to have your game look really good, and then you're going to have a lot of time to be able to go out there and tweak your gameplay and make it fun. Yeah. Just well, and they were the saying showcase, you don't need to use different models for the cutscenes and gameplay. Like, you can just yeah, get... Yeah, which is good. Yeah, it's just like... You don't have to do that shit where there's like, oh, cutscene's about to announce, uh, start, you fucking t- no clip, you go through the floor, and your character's down there A-posing, ready to just pop up at the moment's notice. Yeah. Or like um, yeah. the opening to FF7, where they try to do it super smooth, but what they do is they have the train spit out a gust of smoke... And then when you pass through the gust of smoke, you're in the gameplay models instead of the cutscene models. But could the cutscene models just stop back there and the gameplay models start walking forward? Yeah, well, it's like, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, Unreal 5, it looks great. Uh, I know some people are like, wow, they did they really brag about it running at 30 FPS? That sucks. They shouldn't be bragging about that. That should be bare minimum, which is fair. It shouldn't even be bare minimum. 60 should be bare minimum now. The indus- That should be the industry standard. Well, industry standard and bare minimum are two different things. Uh, I'll make them both. <laughs> the bare minimum should be the standard, so they're always going above and beyond. <laughs> the standard means that's what everybody sh- tries to do. Bare minimum means yeah. you can't get away with doing less than this. Uh, anyway, whatever. They will. They do, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, that sucks, but the thing looked very pretty. Uh, it was apparently actual gameplay running real-time on a PS5, uh, which makes it the first piece of uh, footage that we've seen running on PS5 at all. But that's not also not real, because it is... It's still like... it's Yeah, it's running on the engine... And you could call it gameplay, but could I actually pick up a controller and move around, or is it just you yeah, well, it, that's, holding forward on a stick? They're claiming that's what that was. I don't believe them. Well, they—that's they're saying that that was running. That's like a playable tech demo. Like it's not a real game, but it's a playable tech yeah. demo. It's it, it's not a video file. It's crisis with less <laughs> with less steps. 
Yeah, like it's it's it is technically playable. Like it was a it was a build of a tech demo. Yeah. Right. Like it's it's technically playing and it's technically playing on a PS5. It's running in real time. More like unreal time. <laughs> no. Ha, yeah. ha, 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 ha. Not funny. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, but you know, it's hopefully this engine's going to make all the problems go less away or whatever. Cool. Wasn't the most exciting thing ever because I'm not a techie guy, but I understand. At least I'm not stupid enough like a fucking PC Gamer magazine to be like, oh, this is bullshit and means nothing and games are going to look like dookie. And it's like, this was boring and lame and didn't matter. It's like, all right, PC Gamer. PC gaming outlets are actually just the stupidest motherfuckers in the world. (laughs) Like, seriously, dude, come on. Like, I get that you could be like what I said, which is, I found it kind of boring, because I thought it would be a game. But I can at least be like, that's good for that. That'll matter. Uh The Mandalorian Season 2 or 3 or whatever we're on by 2021 will be gorgy. Certainly. There will be more triangles than ever. Because, sorry, because like... They're saying that they're they're doing this so that they can it'll work for all sorts of things. Because remember, I told you Mandalorian they didn't use green screens; they used giant LED monitors uh, that were running the backgrounds in Unreal Four. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they're saying that this that sort of thing is going to become the future for anybody who's able to plan ahead making films. Because I wonder if they go forward, like when uh, when Epic Games. When like they they knew they like the Unreal Five was going was coming out, do you think they would go to like devs who they knew were working with the Unreal Four engine and saying, "Hey guys, don't get that much done." Uh, I don't we think so because coming. it's still kind of early. It's still going to be another full year until the fucking thing's out. So, I think Fortnite will migrate to the. They said Unreal they announced it. They said that Fortnite is going to be on the new consoles day one, because of course because money. Yeah, um, Fortnite, despite the fact that it is lo- um, not making as much money as it used to, still makes way more than <laughs> everyone else. Well, I remember the big quote about Fortnite is, like, when it was uh, had been at its peak for, like, a while, Tim Sweeney said in an interview that, like, we're no longer competing with other video games, we're competing with things like Netflix. Yeah. Because it's not people are going to play Fortnite or play a different video game. It's people are going to play Fortnite or they're going to watch Netflix. Because, like, they're that ubiquitous. Yeah, and then they're also looking forward and um, Epic Games Store is sweeping out any fucking game, like, uh, game they want. Yeah. Saying, please come to our platform for, like, a year exclusive. Well, yeah, and it's like, you can't be mad because uh, along with that, they, like, announced that engine costs for Unreal 4 and 5 are gonna be so much lower so before it was like it's free to use until you make 3000 a quarter now it's free to use until you make a million dollars mm, so they're that confident yeah they're like yeah until your game makes a million dollars do you have to bat like pay them like anything if you make a million mm-hmm do you have to pay them? Then you start paying anything royalties. from before the million, I, or do you have pay everything after? I think it's after the first million. You start paying royalties, okay. so they don't request the money after you make it back. Yeah, I, th- I think so. So it's like that's a that's a great that's a great thing to do. And then again, that's on top of like if you put your game on the Epic Game Store, the game the Epic Game Store royalties and Unreal's royalties like basically become the a one payment that's like quite cheap so if i'm sure they could sneak in a deal there as well that like if your game if you're making a game with the uh unreal engine 5 it has to go on the epic game store first they're not gonna shit. do that they could though no because then it'd be like square enix would be okay cool uh we're gonna make our own engine again <laughs> It's going to be bad. It'll be good. It'll be like that Luminous engine that it took years to make. You remember the Luminous engine that we were going to use for 10 games? No. But we only used it for FF15 because it turned out that Unreal was better. Mm. Didn't they use the CyberConnect engine for FF7 Remake? No, they were... So CyberConnect was going to develop the game. Then they threw... 
they they then they fired Cyber Connect. They remade the game uh, from scratch. So it's only been in dev for like three years. FF Seven remake. Yeah. Fucking next part better only be better be coming out soon. I swear to God. Yeah, That's it'll it. probably it'll probably like, come out twenty twenty two. But then you yeah. know the once it'll it'll take a while. Part seven of FF Seven remake. That's when it gets good. <laughs> if each Better if each happen. version of that game is going to only be like five hours of the original, which was yeah. 40 hours long. <laughs> Eight versions. Thanks, Nomura. Hey. We see that this is making money. So it's going to make money forever. I mean, FF7 is the most popular one with the most copies sold, and... Remake is doing quite good. Yeah. It's just really lame. Now I let's should... remake FF9. The goodest one. Yeah, let's um just make a full game. Yeah. No, actually and don't remake it... FF9. It's great. Just get the Remeco mod so that the black background images are good. And then, I mean, you can't really go wrong. Mm. Uh, let's see what we got. Oh yeah, Ghost of Tsushima. Game looks really good. Don't care. This is the closest the real look. gameplay. It's they did. They showed a lot of real gameplay. I want to play it. I don't. I want to see the controls. I want to see how it runs down. Okay. Uh, it looks like Breath of the Wild with Assassin's Creed and Samurai. That's fine. Yeah. I just don't want to fucking. I don't want to buy a game and it's like whatever. I'm bored. It looks good. It looks really cool. Did you see the, how the waypoint system works? No. Okay, so um, when you use the map and select something, like, uh, okay, what they they wanted to do was basically make none of the, the UI video gamey bullshit, like, take you out of it. So, like, everything is sort of meant to be landmarked, so a lot of stuff where it's like, that you should be there, it's just like, you know, there's smoke. Like, like it'll be like, is there a town in trouble? Part of it's going to be on fire, the smoke's going to billow up really high, so you can see it from lots of places or well i like video games i'm not trying to fucking play uh real uh, realism samurai it's, Japanese it's not movie. realism it's samurai movie it's trying to be a samurai yeah, movie. yeah but i'd still if you're gonna be if you're not gonna go full realistic just give me a fucking ui well just it does it, it has it, me it ha let me tell you on top of that if you really want to mark somewhere on the map the way it shows you is instead of doing like mini map and follow the dotted line instead it's it's gusts of of wind that you can see like they have like the wind lines and so you can just follow you follow the wind or there will be like colored birds fucking flying to things that you follow so you can find secrets and shit it's really cool no i'm good i don't think i'm gonna play it it's Look at it first before you hear me explain I am. It. I'm gonna... I'm just gonna play it on the side while... It, uh, whatever. It looks cool. Okay. There is one piece of the UI that just says undiscovered location from far away. I'm skipping through. There's a horse. Oh, I really like those flowers, though. I always did. The wind and shit. Like, it's trying to be like a fucking so Kurosawa the, movie. Is the wind... The wind... Okay, so you open up a thing and then the wind pops up in, like, real thick lines and shows you where you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not awful. I don't like it still. <laughs> it looks cool. It looks neat. I like Sucker Punch. I can respect what they're doing. I, I, they've done... They're good enough that uh, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt about this. No. They haven't... Sucker Punch has never made it a, made a game that I don't like. Uh, I don't know what games they've made. Uh, all the Sly Cooper games except the fourth one. All the infamous games. Okay, so like the, I've played one of those games. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, all the Sly Cooper games are fucking great. The infamous yeah, games are okay. all fucking great. Like you've played, in my opinion, the only Sucker Punch you, game you've played is my least favorite, and you love it's that. Because you have a bad opinion. <laughs> it's because you don't know. You're not a real gamer, bro. That's that's all. <laughs> yeah, real gamers, <laughs> real gamers jump into franchises at the third game. <laughs> Yeah, but the, okay, it's the third. It's more like a spin-off because yeah. nothing that ma happened in one or two, infamous one or two matter yeah. in Second Son. Well, well, it's it's it basically says only the good ending of two happened, but then like 
it totally retcons how that works and, and says, you know how the good ending said that all people with superpowers die? Well, guess what? More people with superpowers showed up. Mm, so it's like mutants. They're just going to eventually keep coming back. Yeah, I guess. Is there a man talking describing this game? Yeah, yeah, combat? there is. He's he's talking. <laughs> okay. What is this L1 R1 shit? <laughs> what L1 R1 like shit? Super moves? There, I don't know. On the bottom left, there's like a health, and then there's like a, a oh, bunch of Oh, that's never uh, explained. Yellow balls. Okay, cool. I'm going to assume it's super moves. <laughs> I'm going to assume that <laughs> like as well. Like it's like your focus meter from uh, a other game. Yeah. Um, it looks cool. It looks like a lot of one-hit kills, like actual samurai movies. Like Assassin's Creed 1, 2, like 5. <laughs> yeah. Like, it looks... Which I liked more. Yeah. Like, it's easier. And it makes boss fights, like, kind of boring. I, I think they're going to do interesting stuff here, because there's also a stance thing, where certain stances do more damage to certain enemies. So they're just ripping off Neo? Yeah, it's like, it's like Neo, Assassin's Creed, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, well, no, it's just that one thing from Neo. I wouldn't even give it that. Okay. Because Neo is annoying to play. Yeah, but uh, the Neo Neo's like Devil May Cry, where if you don't play for a while, when by the time you come back, you're fucking trash. You're so rusty that you just can't do shit. As long as you're not like a like you know, there is people who like they pop back into Devil May Cry and they're like, all right, DMD mode, and then it's just boom. yeah. Some people just like have have worn their hands down from replays until yeah, uh, it like, stops being a thought for them. By the time I finished Neo one. I was like, I flowed through combat super well. There was like, because that game has a like a stamina recovery system. Yeah. So like, you'd be fighting an enemy, and then like you you as you were like doing damage, there would be this gray part of the bar that would still show up a lot while the green one went away. And after you stopped attacking, a white part would come in, and if you hit L one. Um, at any time, it would refill that much of your stamina. So oh, you like, get, like years a of war. Pulse. Yeah, it's like an active reload for your stamina. That was so, for you, Ian. Yeah. I but saw I that you, you smiled the second I said it. <laughs> yeah, because it works. It makes sense to say it like that. But then you can also get an upgrade where, depending on your stance, if you do a dodge, it will fill up your stamina as well. Cool. So, it, but then, like, by the end of the game, I'm just fucking, like, going through this shit perfectly. Like, I didn't fail. And then I stopped playing for a while, and then the DLC came out. And I was ass. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> and I'm like, everyone's too strong. I don't really want to get back into how this plays. So then Neo 2 came out, exact same story. Yeah. Except their their skill system, like their leveling system, fucking sucks. I heard Neo 2 is cool, but hard. It's cool. It's just hard, and there's like a lot of RPG elements, and it feels like I gotta grind a bunch. Oh, that's... Yeah. Yeah, so... Whatever. Uh, we... Not all video games can be Dark Souls 1. Yeah. Not even Dark or Souls 2. Or 3. Definitely not Dark Souls 2. A Dark Souls 3 is a little better. It's just not as good, like, in design. Yeah. Sekiro is the best Dark Souls. Sorry, no. Jedi Fallen Order is the best Dark Souls. Sure, because it has a difficulty slider, because it is more of a story-based game and not a combat-based game. Uh, it was supposed to make you mad. No. You don't like Dark Souls. I'm not going to get mad at you over this anymore. Fine. Uh, Bleach Dark Souls is the best Dark Souls game. That's a movie. No, it's a DS fighting game. It's an online game that was on the Nintendo DS. <laughs> Whatever. Bleach is cool. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, Paper Mario, the new one, comes out July 17th. That got announced out of fucking nowhere. Okay. I think Paper, Paper Mario fans need to shut the fuck up about how they only really like one of the Paper Mario games. Yeah. Can't you appreciate- Which one is it? Everybody, they only like Thousand Year Door. <laughs> They're like, oh, just Thousand Year Door. And I'm like- Dude, I've seen pieces from a lot of Paper Marios, and I know they that all look the same. They don't. Well, they all look. The, yeah, <laughs> they aesthetically, they're all Paper Mario games, certainly. But Super yeah. pa Paper Mario is like more of a platformer, 
and it was for the Wii, and it had some really cool shit, and it's really funny. And in fact, Sticker Star and fucking Color Splash both have some really cool writing. And uh, sure, the combat's different, but it's cool. It's an interesting take. And this new one has even differenter combat. And people need to shut the fuck up because they're annoying. You're not even fans of Paper Mario anymore. You hate more of those games than you like. Yeah. (laughs) Um... Like I cop, yeah, I stopped calling you're, you're myself a, fan a Star Wars one, fan. Yeah, if you're, like, I don't. Yeah, it's pretty much same. I like episodes four, five, and six. What else do I like? Nothing. Oh. Really? I don't like it, the prequels at you all. You loved I think nine. They're fucking boring. I think they're fun. I think they were a good watch. But am yeah. I a fan? No. Okay. Yeah, I only like four, five, and six, and I and and. Uh, I'm more of a Marvel fan than a Star Wars fan, and those are three. also not good movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I I feel like cinema. <laughs> I feel like I get entertainment out of Marvel movies and know that they're bad, but uh I don't get the same out of other things. Yeah. But anyway, uh even Mar- well Marvel movies they're not I wouldn't say they're bad, I would just say they're basic. Yeah, that's more accurate. Like they all except, they get the same except they, Thor Ragnarok. They, Thor Ragnarok is a masterpiece. <laughs> it's a cinematic masterpiece. Yeah, can't wait for new Star Wars anything that Taika Waititi's directing, because that would be better. Yeah. That will be better. Yeah. His episode of Mandalorian he did was really good. It was! And did you hear that Captain Rex and or Boba Fett will be in The Mandalorian? No, Boba Fett will be in The Mandalorian. No, they well, they just brought confirmed. the guy back, but people are saying, oh, it's Boba Fett. And I'm uh, like... Yeah. Well, it's also oh, the guy. Right. It could also be Captain Rex. Yeah, right. It could just as easily be Captain Rex. It's the same fucking actor. Uh, who else? The uh, the girl, the Mandalorian girl from Star Wars Rebels, is going to be in the new season as well. Cool. I heard uh, Ahsoka might be uh, w- with with the voice actress who does the voice of her playing her. Yeah, which I think is cool. Yeah, I think and the age the ages would probably match up because that girl's like sixteen in the show, and I Mandalorian, she would be like what. Well, Mandalorian takes place like twenty 30? years later. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Mandalorian takes place twenty years after the Empire fell. Twenty years after the clone, end of the Clone Wars. But this, and but it's post the, the prequels. Yeah, I. Uh, I mean sequels. It's po- the good movies. The, <laughs> the uh, yeah, the Mandalorian takes place like two years after uh, Episode Six. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and finally, the it's New like Mutants got a release date. Ten years from Rebels? Yeah, August 28th. Yeah, baby. Coming to theaters. I don't think so. Uh, well, the the entire film industry is using Christopher Nolan's Tenet as, like, a goalpost. So, Tenet is coming out in late July, and they're like, this is the big Tenet. If Tenet goes, yeah. if Tenet goes to theaters, everything if goes to If it goes to theaters, to theaters and, and makes to- money... Then, but what if it doesn't go to theaters because theaters aren't open? They're they're opening. Oh, that's dumb. They shouldn't be. Well, they're gonna theaters are gonna open in the next wave, and just like they're gonna have things for distancing within the theaters. Like they're gonna make you show your fucking driver's license. Like if I went to a show with you, they'd be like, you guys have to sit four feet seats apart. Yeah. I think you know what I think. I think we should go. Everything should be released on home digital movie, but. You can see the movie three weeks early if you go to a theater. But theaters are now all VIP theaters. <laughs> uh, yeah, the problem is, like, movie theaters already make such, like, a small margin on, on movies that they're, like, being fucking killed by this. Especially the handful of them that are, like, art house theaters or independent theaters. Those things are fucking closing their asses down in this. Yeah. Which is a fucking that's shame. Why, that's why everyone should go. To make that's why they should all become VIP theaters. Make it a fucking special thing to go to the movies again, because I don't care to go sit in an uncomfortable seat where I can't recline. I'm just kind of sitting there like this the whole time watching yeah. a movie. I'm like, oh, this is fun. But then, like, you go to a fucking VIP theater and like, sick. Down I go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the movie. Ian leaned right the fuck back in his gamer chair, and his head is at the very bottom of the frame in our video chat. Yeah. Oh, Chris got the same chair as me. Yeah. He... But it's a diva chair from Overwatch. I noticed. I saw the picture and I was like, wow. Yeah. 
Oh, Man, I remember okay, the year. Do you remember the year 2015? I don't. No. What happened in 2015? Overwatch. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah I kind of wanted to play it again, but that was because they're just appealing to me with waifus and Play Overwatch again. 2 when it comes out. No, it's the same game. <laughs> I... Yeah, man. Like, Overwatch and Fortnite have to do this thing where they're like, what is a sequel in the modern online game market? And Overwatch is going the route of PvE, where Fortnite is doing more of the environmental storytelling yeah. with big in-game events that would launch within an hour. If you play the game... Well, Fortnite like four is to basically five Rock Band 4 Like a meteor it. would hit the planet. Like, what? Fortnite is just Rock Band 4 it, where they're saying, like... All of the features and stuff that are just going to get updated to the same game, and like we're just going to start calling it Fortnite Two or whatever, right? For yeah. Chapter Two or whatever the fuck they called it. Whereas Overwatch is like, well, we still want to maintain the game servers and we still want to do that. So the concept of Overwatch Two is actually probably what we would call a DLC plus a free update, and it's just Overwatch is going to become Overwatch Two. But yeah. it's still going to be another opening, open door for, for monetization. But and they're going to do some minor story missions, like, yeah. Because people, I there is a but a bunch of lore, lore keepers for Overwatch saying, please, for the love of God, tell us what the fuck is up with Zenyatta. How is there want. better story for fucking TF2 than there is for Overwatch? Uh, TF2 has told their story a lot. Did, they didn't bother to tell any story in the game. They just, like, had personality bre put into the characters. Yeah. Like, with voice lines. And then, I think two years after TF2 came out, they were like, all right, time for the shorts. And they put out, like, Meet the Scout, Meet the Heavy, Meet the Sniper. And then they put out Meet the Spy, and it was, like, this four-minute sketch of the spy saying that we've been infiltrated. And then at the end, the spy gets his head blown off. <laughs> and it turns out the scout was the spy the whole time acting and it's funny yeah. and then there's meet the medic which was the medic it was how they introduced uber charging into the game um where it fucking and he just pretty much took a baboon heart and shoves it into the heavy's chest and then forces his ribs closed and it's it's just a good old time yeah. it was funny they turned that meet the medic into a surgeon simulator level and they didn't have to fucking um like go out there and hire, but like, then they did a bunch of fucking five comic star books and writers. shit. They did, yeah. but they still did. They introduced Miss Pauling and shit. They and then they did the whole sketch of like uh, Scout trying to ask her out. <laughs> and he's like, "Hey, I got this bucket of chicken. You want to go bang?" <laughs> yeah, that's a good old. That's some good shit. I just don't like playing that game. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, well, that's all the news I got for this week. Um, well, a lot of people died this week. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, well, like, Fred Willard just died. That's sad. Yeah. Go watch uh, his fucking bit where he is playing an organ at a funeral, and he keeps playing, like, carny music. <laughs> and, uh, I think you should leave. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah, he was some great, that's sad. filmmaker died. Who? Lynn Shelton. Oh. Yeah, well, she died of a blood disorder. It's like people, like, you think you see a bunch of celebrities dying, and you're like, oh, the COVID, right? And they're like, no. Normal co normal causes. Yeah. <laughs> Things that kill people, not freak accidents. Yeah, like, you're, you're still seeing, like, some people, but I think celebrities kind of, they're lucky because their work has shut down extremely fast. And they don't... I, I wonder if, if there is a motherfucking, like, famous actor who has been in a fi like a triple A film. If they got a stimulus check, I'm going to kill someone. <laughs> like, if fucking... What, uh, <laughs> if Chrissy Teigen and John Legend were, like, sitting there and they're like, mm, can't wait for this Donald Trump stimulus check to came in, be like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, Chrissy Teigen, you've got an entire show on Queeby. And your husband has an EGOT. <laughs> Respect the Queeby. Wait, yeah. John Legend has an EGOT? Yeah. Jesus. Well, he's been a... He, he had that, like, one song that he got, like, super famous for that he came out a couple years ago, but he's been active since 2000. No, I know, but, like... 
What do you get the Emmy for? Um, I don't know. Actually, let me see. I said that. That might not be true. Because <laughs> I'm like, John Legend. I mean, he's talented, but he's not EGOT talented. Okay. Primetime Emmy Awards. Jesus Christ li Superstar Live right. Concert. Okay, yeah, he I remember when he was that in that, yeah. Uh, he got the... What is Golden Globe part of the G? Is that a, is that the G? No, the G is Grammy. Grammy. Well, he has a bunch of Grammys. Yeah, that's the one that makes the most sense. Oscars, which is Academy Awards, right? Yep. Um, Glory, a song, best original song. Oh, okay. He got him in common won it. Okay. And a Tony was uh, probably also Jesus Christ Superstar, but on Broadway. It was Jitney. <laughs> what? It was a play in 2017 called Jitney. It, he it was he it was rewarded for best revival of a play. Okay, so he must have worked on the music for the revival. Oh, he got nominated for SpongeBob SquarePants the musical. Okay, he did the score. Yeah, so he so yeah, it's he just he got <laughs> but as like producer credits. I don't yeah. know all 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 music he got like it's just yeah best original song best. Uh, best music for a Broadway show. Uh, they did primetime fucking Jesus Christ Superstar on TV, and he was that. He acted and sang in that, and it's like, you know. Yeah. But it's mostly producer credits he has for that stuff. But He's not like Neil Patrick Harris that you got, which I don't know if he actually has. Well, let's see. I think, I think he's like, nominations... Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever watch 30 Rock? Uh, yes, but not every episode. There was a one episode where um, Tracy Morgan's character, Tracy, Tracy Jordan, Jordan uh, goes on uh, trying to get an EGOT, and he does, <laughs> because that show is a joke. That's funny. How the fuck do you I see awards on this shit? <laughs> oh, oh, I was too far down. Okay. Um, well, he definitely, I think he has an, he should have an Emmy. You know, there's a, there's a Wikipedia page for a list of people who have won uh, EGOT. He got a, he Audrey got an Hepburn Emmy for did. Glee. <laughs> what? He didn't even get the, he, Neil Patrick Harris didn't even get a fucking, like, Emmy for being on How I Met Your Mother. He got one for Glee. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the was, so the only people who have actively won that won everything, not including like honorary awards and shit, are like, yeah, John Legend, uh, Tim Rice, Andrew Lloyd Webber, Mel Brooks, Scott Rudin, yeah, Mel Brooks, Whoopi Goldberg, Mike Nichols. But then like there are ones that are honorary awards, so like Liza Minnelli and Barbara Streisand, yeah. James Earl Jones has he got Quincy Jones. Yeah, good. Harry Belafonte. Yeah. Barbara Streisand, Liza Minnelli. Yeah. yeah. Good for those people. Good for them. Surprised that NPH doesn't, but... Yeah. I Because uh, he is, like, such a... I think he's hosted all of the awards once. <laughs> yeah, he has an EGOT for hosting. <laughs> and e double -G got because he fucking hosted the game awards. <laughs> yeah. Um There is another he hosted there is the a game piece awards of news. back when the game awards were make way cringier, the Spike TV yeah. video game awards. He So there was a musical number about Black Ops and he came out shooting a bunch of other backup dancers. Do you remember this? No, I don't. I remember I watching watch this awards. live on Spike TV in maybe the year 2012. Yeah. <sighs> Do you guys remember Spike TV, aka no, Toxic um, Masculinity, the television channel? Network. Sorry, you're right. Yeah. There's a piece of news you forgot. Uh, what did I forgot? Evo. Oh yeah, Evo online only. Uh, there's only gonna be games with good net code. <laughs> A lot allowed. of the games still exist, but the main stage, the, the equivalent of the main stage games have all been changed. So, like, Marvel's still going to be there and shit, but, like... No, it's not. Yeah, it's called, like, Contest of... something. 
But it's like... I don't see Marvel here uh, in the listing at all. Well, they're doing four different games for the weekends, but then there's other stuff as well. It's only on the, during the weekends. Hold on, let me just look it up. Because I remember... Well, Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Friday for across five weeks. Hold on. Yeah, Evo Online... Wait. Friday, Saturday, I was looking at... Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was looking at the wrong month. So, yeah, sorry. So, Smash Bros. is just no longer involved. Evo Online will because feature spe special trash. exhibitions and content from their previously announced lineup, which was Fighter Z, uh, Grabbles, Sam Show, Soul Cal, Street Fighter V, Tekken 7, and uh, Uniclear. So those are still yeah. going to be there as exhibitions and content, but not the tournament. Which means it's going to be like pre people who have previously won or placed high. Yeah, or and probably that, other. and they'll still have the big announcements, like because Evo is like more of a yeah. is like the Comic Con. Evo is the E three of fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E three of fighting games. So it'll probably it could, be that. you could also say Comic Con, huh? But E three, you could say Comic Con yeah. because they do big announcements there. But E three is for video games. Yeah, E three for fighting games. And then, like, the games that are going to have open tournaments were not part of the original 2020 lineup, but are Killer Instinct, MK11, Skullgirl Second Encore, and Them's Fighting Herds. Two and three of those games have spectacular netcode. Yeah, and Mortal Kombat 11 has good netcode. Yeah. And the rest of those games that uh, used to be there and are no longer have Three of those games mediocre. had the involvement of Mike Z at one point. Yeah. Skullgirls, Skull his game, them's fighting her herds, uses the Skullgirls engine, so uses that they lent they lent to them because they were a similar dev team. Yeah, they well they they, they reached a that got big. Yeah, they they paid um, uh, Lab Zero for it because they they got to a certain Indiegogo amount level, and Killer Instinct Mike Z worked on it back in the 2013 version before the second. A developer got involved, but they kept the net code from when Mike Z was working on it. Yeah. And Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath is a game. It's fine. I'll probably only watch Skullgirls and Them's Fighting Herds. Oh, Killer Instinct don't skimp on. That game's great. I don't think it's that fun. I think, I know Skullgirls is fun, especially with the fact that uh, you can just... Hey, do you want to use three characters? Yeah, go for it. But, but your opponent's using one. Can you handle them? Yeah. I mean, that's dope. Yeah. We love... You know, Skullgirls so launch if party. No one play, if no one plays Big Band, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> Skullgirls launch party 2011 to still going. <laughs> when will Skullgirls be respected by Evo? Only when it goes online only. <laughs> yeah, only when it only took a global pandemic for Skullgirls to get to Evo. Yeah. And it took nine years. <laughs> I don't know. They disrespected Skullgirls so hard. Well, because it was like, it, they were like, oh, it was too close to the tournament to be involved. And then the next year, they just didn't have it. The next year, they were like, can we be in there? And they're like, ooh, I don't know. You're just not popular enough. But it's like thousands of people were still playing Skullgirls. Yeah. Skullgirls then, like, got like it's funny because Skullgirls is like such a beloved game, but it was still getting the fucking melty blood treatment. I think it's because it's lewd. Yeah, I think Evo was just like, yo, we can accept like Mortal Kombat and stuff, but Skullgirls is like nothing but like panty shots and like yeah. massive floppy titties. So like again, it gets the melty blood treatment. Well, because it, it's also it's called Skullgirls. They didn't have any male characters until the second encore, where they introduced Big Band, who is pretty much just a giant robot, and Beowulf. Wait, Big Band's a a guy? He's a giant robot. I thought Big Band was also a girl, and that Beowulf was the only guy. No, well, maybe, but Big Band has a very, very masculine voice. That's fair. like he sounds like a good. He sounds he sounds like he's like doing smooth jazz the whole time. Yeah. No, I just. I thought I'd heard that, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Also, like, you know, it's a great game. Um, no, it was a big band was a man, but I believe he has become a robot. His name he before he was his name was Ben Birdland before he was big band. I get it. Yeah, B B B B. A B B B B boy. Uh do we have uh, he's RoboCop. He's RoboCop with jazz. <laughs> nice. 
Uh, he was he, he was beaten. He was killed by crooked cops, and then uh, a man turned him into a robot. He's reverse Robocop. But for anyone out there who doesn't know why Big Band is sick, he has a fucking like. Uh, he can use his meter to stop time and play a horn, and people use it to play like all Happy Birthday or fucking someone JoJo theme JoJo, <laughs> yeah. And then it ends with you can end it with like a fucking flurry of punches that people usually use to disrespect the enemy. Yeah, I I love yeah. the ones where people have somehow like done actual full songs by playing as big band fucking ten times and playing all the different sections of a song and put it in a video. Yeah, that's like <coughs> that's like infinity fucking get good, you know. Mm -hmm. Like if you're like if you can cut together all of your fucking gameplay so that it makes noise, that's cool. Yeah, it's like those guys who used to make like gun <laughs> sound music videos. Yeah, where they would just be gun like, "New Call of Duty's out, time to shoot a gun and make it sound like a popular music song." Yeah, that's cool. Um, but that reminded me of Gunshots of the Beast. You know that one. No. It's like, gunshots of the beat. I think uh, it's either the same guy or it is this song, but it could just be that it's the same guy, but it's the guy who did the, I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the know. best. I'm the best. I forget. That's you know what ancient you know what, memes, though. You know what came out today? What? Or a few days ago? What? Or whatever. Scoob! Oh, yeah. Did you watch it? No, I think I'm going to, though. It looks really nice. I think I will. Cute. I don't like how they did my boy dirty by casting Will Forte and not asking him. What? Matthew Lillard. What Matthew Lillard oh. isn't Shaggy anymore. Was he... Did he do Shaggy for, uh... Mystery Incorporated? Previously? What the fuck?! What? Fred is not... They recast Fred! They recast everybody. But they usually recast everybody. <laughs> for stuff, but Matthew Lillard has been shaggy in the cartoons since the fucking live action movies because he's so good. Yeah, but Frank Welker has never not been Fred. Scoob is the first movie. But Frank Welker is still Scooby. Movie. Yeah, he's still Scooby, but he's not Fred. Yeah. I don't know. I don't... But, I'm kind of upset. But Velma... I'm not Velma even that big and Daphne fan, have, like, upsetting. tossed around a bit. Like, yeah, Velma. Gina Rodriguez is Velma now. Yeah, uh, in the last show, it was Kate Micucci as Velma. Amanda Seyfried as Daphne. Yeah, that's. I mean, like, it's not like it's bad casting. Yeah. Like Zac Tracy Efron. Tracy Morgan's in the movie. Tracy Morgan. Yeah. It's Captain Caveman. Oh right, right. That's the post-credit scene. Yeah. Jason Isaacs is just Dick Dastardly. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe they put such a vile word. Dastard. Yeah. Um, Why is there two Velmas? What the fuck? There's two Velmas. Uh, of course. Well, okay. I'm looking at just the Google, like, like Google autocomplete thing where it's just yeah. giving me the cast. Yeah. And it's giving me two Velmas, so I'm going to Wikipedia now. I'm, I mean, um, IMDb. Oh yeah. Who are the two Velmas? Um, like Gina Rodriguez and who else? Gina Rodriguez and okay, Ariana Greenblatt. <laughs> Ariana Green is young Velma. Oh, okay. Yeah, because there's a little kid flashback. She was young Gamora. Oh. In Avengers Infinity War. I remember that scene exactly because it's a meme. Yeah. <laughs> what did it cost you? <laughs> Smash. Yeah, you saw that that I posted where he's happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh. uh. That's an unreal gross edit as well. <laughs> yeah, it's literally... They, like, smear-tooled Thanos into having, like, this fucking giant smirk. No, it's it's the... Uh, it's not even that. It's they selected the lips as a new layer and turned it upside down. Uh, but then they also, like, stretched them. Yeah. Um... Yeah, uh, I want to see Scoob. I also want to watch Mystery Incorporated, because... But it's just hard to find in fucking Canada, man. Mystery Incorporated? Yeah. The, Is that a movie the or Scooby a Scooby-Doo Mystery show? Incorporated. It's the one that's Gravity Falls, but it came out like a couple years before Gravity Falls. 
Oh, the comedy drama series? <laughs> yeah, no, it's apparently really good. Like, everybody says, like, yo, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated is, like, the best Scooby-Doo shit ever. I have, a, I have a strong opinion about um, things that are not available in the country. Yeah, I'm gonna because pirate of some them, bullshit. but it's just, like, Yeah, just steal it. Annoying. If they, if the comp, if, if they won't... Network, if you do pirate it, though, and Cartoon Network puts it on a streaming service that you can get... Watch it there. Fucker, you're gonna have to get this it's streaming service. Yeah. <laughs> well, according, you can get it all on YouTube and Google Play. Yeah, but you have to pay but, for it. Yeah, it's uh, okay. How much though? Like, is it the entire? You that's to... one episode is two ninety nine. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Do you not remember buying shows on iTunes and how fucking ridiculous they are? Yeah. An episode for three dollars. Like, I'm not going to pay fucking $50 for two seasons worth of fucking digital only. You can like, I'll buy the fucking Blu-ray, but a Blu-ray has a disc and a case. I get why it costs that much money. Like, I spent fucking 60 plus bucks on my Batman Beyond Blu-ray, but I get it. That's some, that's some shit I don't get, is it's like, it obviously costs money to put games out physically. Yeah. But why am I paying, like... You buy a game physically, you get to hold that shit forever. Until that disc breaks... Actually, that's not true anymore because you still have to do, like, a 10 gigabyte patch for most games yeah. when you start them. But, but, like, for the longest time, you would... This has been a thing... For, I have always thought this when digital first came around for full games. You buy that fucking disc... Like, you, you get a disc, you put it in your system, you get the game, it costs you $60. Yep. Well, eighty here. There is a yeah. whole there is a whole thing about buying you know, like they have to manufacture the disc, they have to manufacture the case, they have to plant the shit, they have to get get a it to places on or time. A human being, uh, th but this is still in manufacturing to put it all together, put the disc in there, ship it, wrap it, get it to a place on time. There is like five hundred people so far in this process to get it to a fucking GameStop, Walmart, Best Buy. Yep. And then they set, and then they have people who have to put it on the shelves, and ship it, or like they have to make sure it's stocked. They have yeah. to sell all their copies, and that's sixty dollars. I buy the fucking digital version, which where all they yeah, they just upload it, upload it to a server, and I have to pay the same money. <laughs> well, do you know why that is? Because they can. No, that's not why. It's it's more complicated. It's the stores that sell physical games, which is still have a, how a vast number of like games that get bought for birthdays and Christmases are bought, which is big money. Yeah. The stores that sell those games say, hey, we just won't sell your fucking games, Sony, if you make them cost, not cost or even. Whole, or carry your consoles. Yeah. We'll not carry the so games like, if they're not the same on both, both systems, unless it's a limited edition, right? Yeah. So that's why. It's like... That's why some games go digital only, uh, because they don't want to pay the cost of the, the printing. And that's why those games tend to be cheap, a little bit cheaper. Uh, on top of that, like that's why a lot of those uh, games go limited um, run. Pro Skater, uh, the new Pro Skater games, it's only available physical for like PS4. Everything else is digital. Oh, interesting. Or that's what Stevie was telling me, because he likes to buy physical games. Well, he... Yep. Like, I obviously bought it on PC because that's where I play all my games. Yeah, he wants. To, he was thinking of buying it on his PS4, and if he gets a physical copy, he has a nephew. He can fucking push Tony Hawk onto the nephew. That that child. He could be like, enjoy the things I enjoyed when I was your age. Yeah, yeah. So, and his brother-in-law has a PS4, so he could just be like, here, borrow let it. The kid play it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I get it. There is still. I get why people still want physical editions of games. People like to try, push, push games around. I just like digital because I don't like... One, when I want to play... Like, I'm playing playing FF7 again. If I get upset at this game, all I have to do, if I want to do something else, is just press my home screen and play and select a different game. Yeah. But if I had... If it was all on discs, I had to... It's not very far for me because my TV is right here. <laughs> Yeah, but like if I was relaxing in my bed or something, playing, which is across the room, I'm like, ah, oh, I gotta get off my fat fucking ass now. Yeah, I mean, that's true for me. I do have to get up and go up to the shelf and pick the game off and do the whole thing, but I don't yeah. mind it. It doesn't really bother me. I also just don't like, like, I things I have. It's purely, it's almost for like a collect. Like I have fucking volume one to twenty four of My Hero Academia, just to have it. 
Yeah. I'll read them eventually, but, like, because I've already read them. <laughs> but, like, I, books on my shelf, fine. Because I would grab it, I would read it in one sitting, put it back. Mm-hmm. But something I would have to, like, go and get, like, a disc for every day, I don't know, just... I'm a lazy man. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a millennial. I'm not. I don't even know what I am actually. <laughs> we're cuspies. Yeah, we're right. We're on either the millennials cusp. or Gen Zs. Yeah. Either we're the old Gen Zs or we're the young, the young millennials. Hell yeah. Uh. Yeah. But um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Uh, Scoob, looks good. Want to want to yeah, watch? Looks fun. Thing. There's a waifu in it. Uh, is there? It's like a cop that pulls them over at one point, and she's like wearing that classic like all brown highwayman patrol yeah thing, and she just looks really cute. Mm-hmm. I think it's really and funny. Of age, huh? <laughs> that is an adult woman. <laughs> well, yeah, she's a cop, but also she's a well, cop. But, uh, isn't the aren't the aren't isn't the, the Scooby Doo gang like aren't they actually teens? It depends on the adaptation. Sometimes they're in their early twenties. Sometimes they're like preteens, like in a pup named Scooby Doo. Yeah. Well, and some of them is it's like they just started Mystery Inc. and then other ones. I, it's like I they've believe been doing Mystery it for 10 Incorporated. Years which is like the one where it's the most clear how old they are. I think that one I've been told they're like late high school and partway through they like or, or start going to college or something late like that. Late high school. It's like the summer before they go off to college or whatever. Yeah. Again, or the summer where before Scooby and Shaggy just smoke themselves to death and um, Daph my favorite Daphne Scooby Doo like shit. A trophy wife. My favorite Scooby Doo shit is like. Did you ever watch the Zombie Island one? Like the old like uh, no. 90s. No, I've only seen the only movie I've seen is Scooby Doo Cyber Chase, and I don't think that's good of a, that good of a movie. That's the fourth one in the late 90s, early 2000s, straight to VHS for a series. Yeah, I think the best Scooby Doo movie is um, Scooby Doo live action one. Scooby Doo Two Monsters Unleashed. No, the one, uh, just the one where they go to that island and oh, like the, you know. Did you watch Sarah Monsters Michelle Unleashed? Because I liked that, no. but Monsters Unleashed, the sequel, I felt was a much better movie. Because that yeah, is that the one where Scooby fucking vibes out in the in the disco. Yeah, Scooby Doo one, the live action film. Uh, don't think it's that good. All right, well. Cause the, an idiot. No, because it's like it wanted to be the R-rated movie and then got a last-minute rewrite, and then it's just kind of awkward. That makes it better. <laughs> like, Shaggy gets a girlfriend named Mary Jane. Yeah. And he's like, ooh. Because he's a stoner. Yeah. And then she turns out to be a demon or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Still though, they got a great cast for that those fucking two movies, but I I feel Monsters uh, Monsters Unleashed is better. Not just because Seth Green is in it too, but I mean, who doesn't like Seth Green? Yeah. Uh, and that the plot of that one's great because it's like pe they're making all the classic Scooby Doo monsters real, so you get like uh, the uh, whatever the tar guy is, you get the thousand volt ghost, you get fucking minor 49er, the pterodactyl ghost. Uh, James Gunn, who wrote both movies and also wrote and directed the Guardians of the Galaxy films, uh, says the second one is his favorite too. <laughs> I'm sure because he, like, didn't he? He did the first one, right? He did both, yeah, he wrote both. Yeah, he, prob he probably did the fir first one. And was like, sick, R-rated, I can do what I want. Yeah, R-rated Scooby-Doo parody, but officially licensed. Not even a parody, it's just like... Because a parody would be like scary movie. It's like more like a... a R-rated reimagining. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, he he probably he was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this R rated. This is sick. And then the these are all my funny favorite bits. And then Papa Warner Brothers came in and was like, change all that. Yeah, it was approved, and then it wasn't. And then he rewrote it. And then so when he did two, he was like, I know the constraints I have to work with. Yeah. So I'm gonna make it better. And he made it better to what he liked. Yep. But uh, yeah. Personally, that that one I like a lot more. I think it's it's fun. But yeah, great cast in those. But I love, I love the the Zombie Island. Like even the Cyber Chase, I like. But it's the least good of those four. 
movies that it was a part of, but um, the Zombie Island one's the best because it's like, uh, it's it's just like really good. It's hard to <sighs> say why. It's also like really fucking scary for kids. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, cause that, that was the first one where it's like, Scooby-Doo, but the monsters are real. <laughs> and it's like, there's actually a really fucked up moment that's like, super scary for kids, where it's like, um, they're like, oh yeah, it's just another motherfucker wearing a mask, right? When they're, yeah. they're up against the zombies, and then they actually, like, pull his head clean off. <laughs> and it's like, that's terrifying for a child. <laughs> yeah. For like a fucking kid, yeah, like, be like, uh, whatever. What if they just like ripped his face off and there's just nothing but like viscera? Oh, before? like like instead oh, of yeah, pulling the mask off and pulling the whole head, they pull all the skin off and it's just a skull. Yeah, yeah, that would that would be more scary, definitely. But also, I think somebody would have said, "Hey, you know what? I think this is maybe a bit too scary for the children." Yeah. Oh god, I don't know why I'm yawning so much right now. It's okay. You're, you're a sleepy boy. I'm always am. Um... Hell yeah. Uh, so for the weeks, speaking of scary, and but not for children, uh, I started playing Silent Hill 2. Cool, because Chris and Emma did? Yeah, well, because them getting it made me go, oh fuck, I want to play that game. That game's fucking great. I love that game. But I was like... Yeah. Uh, trying to figure out sort of like where I could and I so I figured out a way to uh, a few days ago because um, there's this thing called Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition which is a fan made mod for the PC version of the game that like upgrades it and isn't trash like the fucking HD collection for PS3 and Xbox 360 um, so that's great I would highly recommend Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition and you may be like Oh, Nathan, but how do you get a hold of Silent Hill 2 for the PC? And also, like, that that thing's terrible. It was a bad PC port. And the answer is, it's technically Abandonware. So go to a website that hosts Abandonware, and you can download it without having to rely on sketchy websites, that are like pirating nice. sites that have viruses. Uh, My Abandonware, for example, is a great site. Um, and then download the Enhanced Edition mod. It turns the audio into the improved PS2 version's audio, and same with the cutscenes, it re like goes over the cutscenes. It upscales a lot of the graphics. Uh, yeah. It lets you play with PS4 or Xbox controllers. You know, altogether great, fucking fantastic mod, fucking fantastic game. Uh, I I'm just like almost done the apartments section, which the, the game's just good. Like fuck. You Ian, you might like Silent Hill too. No, it's scary. <laughs> I only play Resident Evil, and only the ones where I have a dodge roll. <laughs> you managed, so, Did you beat two or no? <laughs> RE3 make... I cheated. <laughs> oh, right. Did you beat both playthroughs, or just the one? Ah, uh, no, I got to the... I got to the series, and was like, I'm done, and then RE3 came out, and then I played that, and I was like, oh my god, I love this game so much more. <laughs> uh, then play RE4, obviously, but like... Uh, yeah, I will. I, I have it downloaded. I was thinking of playing it. Cool. Even before the remake it was announced. Yeah. I I'd like I have it on my PS4. I probably like I hope they are doing a hard reboot of the story though for some sh uh things at, after 4. Because they did Capcom did confirm that the thing they used to make Nemesis is directly related to the Lost Plagueis. Yeah, the Nemesis. They retconned the Nemesis parasite to be part uh the Lost Plagueis. Yeah. Um, it was, it was uh, before it was Nemesis was created in an umbrella facility outside of like France or something, but now it's just an umbrella facility from somewhere in Europe. Yeah, which is where RE4 takes place, a made up place in Europe, made up Spain. Yeah, there, it's it's Spain, but it's the it's not. Yeah. Um. But speaking of places that are made up, and Ada Wong better fucking come back in that same dress if I see anything different. <laughs> well, the RE4 dress is different from the RE2 dress. No, that's what I'm saying. Oh. She has to come back in her RE4 dress. <laughs> I understand that they they slightly modified the uh, it for the art for the remake. Yeah. But it was still the same dress. I don't want any modifications. <laughs> Ada Wong is that bitch <laughs> who shows up 
She will, really yeah, but also she seems into like... a fucking war zone, a pandemic. She seems like the, the, the type to own two different bright red gorgeous dresses. Yeah, no, only red. Yeah. She only owns red dresses. Someone's like, why don't you wear blue one time? And she's like, why don't you fuck off? Because <laughs> I'm hot. Get used to it. My name is not even Ada Wong. That's just what that fucking twink it's from Ada. Raccoon it's City Ada. thinks I am. Whatever. But her name is not that. Yeah, well, it's, it's what made we up. what know thing. her as. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of he, Silent Hill 2... Someone's, like, calling her, like, Vanessa or some shit, and then, like, Leon walks in the room, and she's like, shut up, my name's <laughs> Ada. Yeah. Um, but what I like... Your last name is Wong? You're not even Chinese. You're from Japan. Shut up! <laughs> no white person knows that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. White people don't know where Asian na- last names come from. Yeah. They think Lee is a, is a name for all of Ch- all of Asia. Yeah. Uh, but, okay, let me talk about Silent Hill 2 a bit more, for realsies. Yeah, sure. What I love about Silent Hill 2 is that even though the, the games d- always got compared to RE because there are similarities, what I love about SH2, it's not about um, hoarding sort of items in the same way. You're not, you don't have limited item space. You've got unlimited item space, but then there's still things like ammo that and health items that like can be hard to find which i love yeah um the game is very very pretty especially with the the fixes um it's still very spooky and it's more like it's horror is more based on atmosphere and how you get the endings is so fucking ridiculous it's great yeah um but like man fuck whoever came up with the idea for Silent Hill, where it's like, uh, Just keep talking. I'm gonna go get some water. Okay. I can hear you down the hall. Whoever came up with the idea for Silent Hill, where they're like, oh, the way it works is you have a radio on you, and the static gets more louder and more intense on the radio. The closer you get to enemies, is so smart because a, it helps you detect enemies, but b, it's completely spooky as fuck. And again, Akira Yamao- Yamaoka's music it's like not even music sometimes like it's brilliant that's what i like it's like sometimes it's just like tonal fucking weird sounds and shit did you hear all that ian yes i did my fucking tum tum hurt oh i'm blaming this dude oh the the ice cap no i got a chocolate chill oh but it's very it's got a lot of dairy in it and a lot of sugar yeah. I think I might be lactose intolerant. <laughs> yeah. To milk. Switch almond switch to almond milk, bitch. <sighs> there's no almond cheese though. Uh there's non dairy cheese. I don't know, I'm not a big fan of nut cheese. <laughs> there's there's non dairy cheese. Yeah, but it doesn't taste as good. Whatever. Yeah. I'll suffer for pizza, but I don't want to suffer for milk. It's not that good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Silent Hill 2 sounds real good, scary. I really like it when communities come together and they fix a game. Yeah. Except for when they do it and then the devs are like, No! Stop it! Our net code is perfect, Street Fighter Five. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. And then they put out uh, their own version to try and fix their net code and then it's fucking bad i think the guy who actually like stole like made the netcode was saying he said like just take my fucking mod and implement it in the game (laughs) yeah right don't do this other shit just take it i i don't care it's funny because when capcom was at its coolest about fan shit it was at its worst about making games yeah because they that fan fucking uh what was it Mega Man cross street fighter that was like a fan game that became a real game from Capcom. Yeah. Uh, and that's awesome. But then, like, at the time, they were making Trash Garbo games. Mm. Like Dark Void. Like Resident Evil 6. Yeah. I like how we both named a different game that's also bad by Capcom. Yeah. I. God, I really. I do am very excited for them to delete Resident Evil 6 from the canon. <laughs> I don't know. Because they should. But then, but then fucking, uh, Revelations 2 doesn't make sense. So? Revelations 2 also sucks. No, it doesn't. It's bad. You're bad. 
I, I it was yes. <laughs> yeah, Revelations two is great. Did you get the bad um, ending? Is that why you're mad? No, I didn't even get to fucking go through it because I was trying to do co-op with my buddy and he just couldn't fucking do it. <laughs> like and, online bad or like he just didn't no, like. No, like you can't even do it online. It's only couch co-op. That's the fucking thing. So we had to use like Steam's version of Parsec to do it, and he's shitty at video game. Oh, he's so just he ba- can't fuck. He's he's not a good aimer. So then, so, and you should have made him the guy that points that it's the my fucking, fucking thing. computer. And I'm on no, shut up. I'm on my fucking computer on my fucking mouse and or at a controller in front of me. I couldn't use any of those three to control Claire. <laughs> That's I a- had to l- sit through him fucking missing all the shots and letting me die because uh, other girl can't use a gun. Because that's how they thought they were going to balance a co-op game, is by making the other character fucking worthless. No, it's good. Oh, they could sh- they st- I could shine a flashlight in their eye, and they fucking st- get stunned a bit, and we just stab them to death instead of wasting ammo. And you but can still, spot invisible late. enemies. There wasn't any at the point. Well, it's because you didn't get far was. enough. Because it sucked! But it's just because your friend sucks. It's actually good. No, make it a single player game. Don't cuz didn't you don't, in the single player when you're by yourself, don't you have to switch between two fucking characters? Yeah. That's stupid. Make it one. Why? Because why do I got to play control 2? Because it's a co-op game. No, it's not then. It's not a co-op game. You can't play it online. You have to have your friend sitting next to you. Resident Evil Revelations 2 is good. You're just uh you have bad friend. You know what? Yeah, I do. He's awful. Because I, I like... He's a real big piece of shit. Resident Evil Revelations 2 is perfect for people who one person's good at shooting and the other person isn't. Yeah. It's a it's a great Chris and Emma game. <laughs> yeah, maybe they should try it. I think they did. Did they? Yeah. I don't know. It's Chris Online. I'll message him right now. Send him a text message. No, it's easier to just do it over Steam. I can just do this. Okay. Uh, to, me at this point. to change the subject somewhat, I also started watching a television series on Amazon Prime called Upload. Yeah, I saw ads for that while I was going through Twitch streams because I'm pathetically lonely and have no friends right now. Okay, um... That's not true, I'm literally always in my Discord. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a good show. It's by Greg oh. Daniels, who is the one of the creators of The Office and also one of the creators of Parks and Rec. Uh, not the one that did Good Place or Brooklyn Nine Nine. It's the other one. Okay, so it's the other creator. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, they, upload they is essentially shows. Black Mirror meets Good Place. Like it's just very similar in concept it's, it's black mirror except it doesn't end with you going oh my fucking god well it's got that it's i was rooting for a pedophile the whole time <laughs> uh it's it's got some of that um oh my god but greg daniel's um brother-in-law is toby from the office oh um anyway uh Upload, the conceit of Upload is that there's this main character who is named Nathan. Hell yeah. Uh, and that guy dies. And he is, his conscience, consciousness is uploaded into a digital afterlife. Um, where he can live out the rest of his days. He can interact with, you know, people on Earth. And he can, you know, he's essentially just a program and a computer. Um... But, like, the program is, like, a an area. It's a place. It's, like, a hotel. Yeah. And it's a comedy, but also it's, like, kind of Black Mirror-ish, where it's, like, this technology is crazy and bad, maybe, and capitalism bad. Um, and, uh... But he... Oh, on top of doing uh, Upload, he's also producing Space Force. Yeah. That's starring a, Steve Carell. They came out within days of each other. Yeah. Um... For competing streaming services. Uh, but anyway, Upload. Uh, it's really neat. There's some really great jokes in there. Um, there's this bit where... Uh, it's like... Oh, you're o- you only get to see a certain number of actual people who are ha! on the Chris says he didn't like Revelations 2! Wow. Alright. I liked it. I thought it was cool. Uh, <laughs> anyway... 
Maybe Chris doesn't like it because he was like. <laughs> Maybe he got stuck he was playing. Like, Emma, his... put the light over there. And she's like, where? <laughs> These enemies are invisible. You need to point this at them. This isn't Animal Crossing. Point, you bullshit. I don't know. I can't handle two sticks. <laughs> anyway, um, upload is a. Uh... Uh, it's cool. There's this bit where it's like, oh, you can only see a certain number of people. There's way more of them um, out there. And one of the no. things is like, you can tell because the frame rate's really bad. <laughs> and it shows like a person in real life, but they've got a low frame rate. And it's like, oh, fuck, that's hilarious. Yo, uh, fucking Greg Daniels. Yeah. He was also a writer on The Simpsons. Yeah. In the, during the good seasons <gasps> of The Simpsons. The good seasons. Well, he started. He came in on season five. Okay. So he was there for a bit. He was the writer of 22 short films about Springfield. He was the credited writer? Yes. Holy shit. He is one... He uh, Well, okay. He, apparently, he is, he was the writing supervisor. Okay. And he was, a, and he was also in the written by, so... Okay, so... Number nine, plot number nine... Yeah. Of 22 short films about Super uh, uh, Springfield. While hosting Superintendent Chalmers for lunch, Principal Skinner burns his roast and bluffs his way through the meal. He wrote... He wrote steamed hands. Fucking, yeah. <laughs> he wrote steamed hands. <laughs> yeah, he did. Holy shit. He was involved in steamed hands. So, fucking good for you, this man. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he is co-creator of King of the Hilt. Man, this guy has made so many good shows. Yeah, Greg Daniels, man. He was, he was on this. He wrote uh, some great Simpsons episodes. Yeah, and then he co-created King of the Hill. Yeah, and then The Office, uh, Parks and Rec. The Office, Parks. Damn. Yeah. Um. But yeah. I must be rolling in it. Really like upload. I'd highly recommend you check it out. It's definitely your kind of thing. Uh, especially if you like uh, really dumb tech jokes that are funny, that are well done. There's a character who was supposed to be one of the Koch brothers. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like, it's just, he's like one of the Choke brothers is what they call him. Like, because it's like, that's their made up name is Choke, because we can't actually say it's a Koch uh. brother. But it's like, it's uh, it's good. It's really good. All of the things you like about those those other shows, but in a streaming format where it can be a consistent story instead of being mostly episodic. Nice. Yeah. If you like The Good Place, you'd like this. I didn't get very far in The Good Place. The Good Place is I great. I have not seen season four. Apparent, and the season four is the last season. Like It was only ever envisioned to be four seasons, so it's like... Yeah. It has a beginning, middle, they and They were end. the ones who made the fucking, like... The, they penned a letter to all the, um, uh, like to the to their fans saying, "Don't fucking try and make us do this shit again." Yeah, let us end it here. Yeah, they were saying like, the, "Hey, this isn't one of those situations where we got canceled. Don't start a letter writing campaign to get us back. We decided we wanted this, and this is what we want, and this is the way we've always envisioned for the story to go." So it's like that's a good thing to happen to a TV show. Yeah. I saw the meme you sent me. Oh, I sent it to you a long time ago. I'm sorry. I'm bad at paying attention to people. Yeah, you are. Anyway, uh, anyway. how's your week been? I, I still have one thing left, but I realize I've talked the entire time. Yeah, you have. Um, I, I don't know. I've been at work all week, and that was shit. That sucks. Um, I played a bunch of Valorant. That game's fun, despite what you think. I but think that was off camera. Those kind of Nathan does not like. He thinks Valorant looks boring. I saw gameplay of it and I thought, yeah, this doesn't look very fun at all. I don't know why people like this. I don't know. Fucking, it, it's fun. It is a fun game. Yeah. It's a tactical shooter with um, class of character abilities, and I think those are good times. Well, I'm glad you like it. Yeah. Pace. It makes. It makes it room. It. You still have to focus on skill, but it's not like in fucking Counter Strike where it's like there's a guy watching you with an op and he's just better than you. So it's like, oh great, I can't do anything. Yeah. Like you're just fucked. There's just more ways to approach the game than slow peek. Make sure you have nades. 
Yes. What are you doing? Uh, I'm adjusting my hair to be full bangs, because I was... Trying to look like a hentai protagonist. Uh, I'm just... I'm just a normal guy at normal man high school, and all I want is to Whoa. be just like everybody an, else. An alien princess fell from the sky, and she wants but my then this, to keep but living? But then when I was walking to school, I tripped, and uh-oh, I landed right in the boob of a girl. No, I tripped, I fell, shattered my skull open, now I'm, I woke up in another world with my smartphone, and also I'm super powerful. <laughs> yeah. I was going more for uh, hentai, not uh, actual just garbage. Yeah. No, there's a bunch of isekai hentais as well. I And you know what? <laughs> I'll make fun of garbage anime but at all this shit, but I have bought more than one game in the Galgun franchise because it's oh, my guilty Oh, I only pleasure. have that one. I kind of Which one do you have? Two, two or double piece? I have one. Wait. There's one, I have double piece. There's one, double piece, and two. I I have double piece. I have double uh, piece and two. I want to get two. <laughs> two is a far more fleshed out game. Yeah, Pun I literally intended. just... Uh, I, was, I played it like... I did like one run of the base game and I was like, man, this game's kind of boring. And then, like, it's just slow and doesn't control super well. <laughs> well, you don't play the game and for the game, Ian. Oh, yeah. And you can play the game with one hand. Yeah. And it's got but the then just like I looked at it's the got the button. It's got the mom's watching it, button too. Uh, <laughs> do you see that? No, is that just like a quick alt tab? Or yeah, if you press something? a if you press a button, it plays like a classic game, like a like a Mega Man type thing. Nice. It's funny. I don't I, um, I don't actually like the games. They're my guilty pleasure. Yeah. I'm not super uh, gross, I'm just kind of gross. I'm not guilty about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. It's just I don't want to say, like, into there, people be like, is that is Nathan saying Galgun's good? And it, that's not what I'm saying. I'm <clears throat> saying Galgun is so fucking stupid that I can't take my eyes off of it. Yeah. Man, when is SNK Heroines Tag Team Friends going to go on sale? <laughs> <laughs> For the same reason, right? Because it's a terrible fighting game, but it's got all the... Yeah, that one's actually because it's terrible. Yeah, um, um, Terry Bogard, but with an eye. God Terry bless. Bogard with an eye, the best character uh, they have ever created. Maybe the best SNK character. It's like they yeah. took their best character and made him even better. Yeah, by make, by one. Short shorts. <laughs> They're also jean cutoffs as well. White tank top, too small. <laughs> Honestly, I would still red vest, still red trucker hat. I'd probably still be extremely happy to see regular Terry Bogard in the Terry with an eye Bogard outfit. I I would like there's characters that Why wasn't that it, the bonus outfit in Smash Ultimate Ian? To uh, cuz only good boys and girls. <laughs> Fuck you. There is a character in SNK who is supposed to just be fe Alice. She's like supposed to be a female Terry Bogard, but she kind of sucks. Mhm. Mm because she's not Terry, but female. She is a woman who was a fan of Terry after she yeah. saw him in the in a previous King of Fighters. And then went on and tried to emulate his style and learn his, like, fighting, like, way. Well, and then and there's, the, of, there's the character... Oh, she wears Terry's hat. Yeah, but then there's the character, um... What's his name? The other Howard. Rock Howard. Rock Howard. Well, Rock Howard. Rock is, Howard um, is is Terry's adopted little brother. Yeah. Well, Rock Howard is is like essentially Geese and Terry's son, because it's Geese's it's Geese's biological son. Yeah. And Terry raised that boy. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's Geese and Terry's son. Yeah. Because it's like he plays like a mixture of both. Um. Yeah, Alice is cool. Yeah, but her, I tried to play as her because you know her just design spoke to me mm -hmm. when I was playing SNK, and um, do not like her. Her moves are very clumsy. It she's she's like Dan. Oh uh, yeah, I where like you. she does the same moves but just not as good. And then if you miss them, you fumble. I think that's Alice. It's either her or another similar character. Mm. Yeah, so. She was a pachinko <laughs> mascot, and then she got him. He can't like came into the game. That's like uh oh wait, you mean like in real life? She was a pachinko mascot. 
Like she was a pachinko thing for KOF. And she was like, at, so she first appeared in the KOF pachinko, and then graduated um, to real character. Yeah, she appeared in uh, the Legend of Wild Wolf. It was a pachinko slot machine. Jesus. And then they were like, "Yep, time to well, because she has a backstory. She's a fan of Terry." <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah. That's like, that's like um. Sakura's backstory, but actual. Yeah, because she's Sakura she's like, Yo, I saw th- I saw that fucking uh, Ryu dude. No, but Ooh. I mean, like, she went on to be an arcade mascot. In the game, yeah. in the in lore, she she's the woman in the Blanca Blanca Chan suit. Oh, damn! Yeah, I love Sakura. She's good. Yeah, I love women in fighting games. Wish they were better to play though. <laughs> yeah, man, they're always so floaty. They're always floaty. They're always gimmick characters. Like, give me a fucking just straight up fighter. Don't yeah. make this some technical shit. Biken is That's extremely kind of- te- technical. If she's a samurai though, like I can yeah. give it to Biken. Oh, but, Biken's like, great. I'm not complaining. I just so find her hard characters. to play as because she's technical. yeah. No, she's fucking super hard. All her moves are really slow. She's like one. You gotta like yeah. Combo super e- well with her. You gotta take a class to play Biken. But like, fucking, Elfelt is a shitty zoner that just doesn't work out well. Jam is like this fucking counterfighter. Mm. Jackio is a like they. I mean, May is like, easy, but I'm gonna. I'm, I want to play May in new Guilty Gear. I don't really love. Her. She's also she's a charge character. Yeah. Like there's no there's no like there's no soul, but female. There's no Ryu but female. There's Ryu yeah. three fucking times. Well, okay, originally like I get Ken is much different now. Yeah. But back in the day, he's literally just a recolor of Ryu. And then he became his own character. And then he got his own evil version. Yeah. There's evil Ryu and violent Ken. Yeah, violent Ken. (laughs) I bring that up almost every time we talk about Street Fighter on the podcast, because it's the best. Yeah, just wait till July when we're like, yeah, Street Fighter, uh, we got some cool people there. Yeah. Can't wait till Strive comes out. Do you see it got delayed, though? Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Totally, you bet totally the best fine. You can. I bet there's not a lot of people in the office right now. Yeah, and that's fine. Arxis people stay safe. I know you guys are also working on P5A. That can take even yeah, longer. Yeah, you already sold your soul to the devil for those animation skills. Yep. There's no fucking way. Okay, I gotta go to the fucking bathroom again. Jesus Christ. No worries, dog. A few moments later. What were we talking about? Oh, fucking fine, no. Not important. <laughs> Alright, um. <laughs> Starting now. Me and Ian forgot what we were talking about, so we're going to move on to whatever it was that we have next on the docket. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I watched a bit of Avatar The Last Airbender again. Yeah! <laughs> like ten episodes in. I kind of, I really want to just skip forward to when Zuko's a good character. <laughs> but he's like, a good character the whole time! He's alright, but more, I mean, like, when he's trying to be likable, like, you know, when... You mean book two? The fucking first episode. Yeah, book two. Yeah. But, like, you know... You gotta be there. Yeah. You gotta watch the journey. Well, if you don't... If you can't stay with him at his worst, you don't deserve to see his best. Yeah, I saw some fucking bullshit where it's like, y'all girls who like Zuko as a kid are now... uh, That's where your relationship with toxic men came from. And I was like, you motherfucker! (laughs) Zuko is a saint! He learns. He yeah. grows and adapts. You do not get to call Zuko no, but I mean, that's a why they fucking toxic male. No, no. I I think the person meant that's why you're trying to change all these bad people. Zuko tried to change of his own. Yeah, solution. yeah. He didn't need someone no, from no. the outside to come in. <laughs> They're not, if these nobody's saying were, that's would, true about Zuko. People are saying because in Avatar you saw Zuko go perfectly, incredibly well written from bad person to great person. You think you can do that to people, to other people that are just bad people that will not change. Yeah. At Grimes. <laughs> right. Fuck off, Grimes. Huh? This crime's getting go. 
I, I mean, she that's like away. that's what Grimes be trying to do. What? She's trying to Katara Zoo, uh, Elon, <laughs> <It's> Elon Musk. Musk. <laughs> Damn. She's like, I can fix you. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm the alpha. I'm gonna <laughs> fix you. <laughs> I'm gonna fix you. I'm gonna make you a bad person like me. Yeah. Sooner or later, you'll be on fucking Twitter. Uh, being like, bro, I think minimum people who make minimum wage should die. Sooner or later, yeah, you'll <laughs> you'll try to kill everyone that works for you. <sighs> um, yeah. Avatar is fucking great. It's maybe the best animated thing that's ever been made. Yeah. Um. I got. I'm just trying to see if I can find that tweet again, but like now it's just people going like, "Oh, your attraction to toxic men started when you picked Zuko over Aang." Yeah. Where's Sokka in this mix? Nobody. No girl picked Sokka. Why? He why? He doesn't. He can't. He's not, not a bender. bender. Because he can't shoot fire out of his fist, but he beats the shit out of benders without the use of chi blocking? Well, it's because he's got a boomerang. And a sword. But also it's because in episode one, Sokka is the biggest asshole in the world, probably. Oh, and he's like, disrespects women yeah. super hard. But by, the, uh, by, like, episode five, he's like, being rude to- Whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the police. No, that was a fire truck, you idiot. Sorry. I live near a fire station. I do too. Um, someone's house is on fire. It was Zuko, I knew it. It was Zuko, he lit someone's house on fire. Him and Katara got in anger because they are actually the married couple. Aang's just a cuck. <laughs> no, I, I saw a great, uh... Like TikTok about it, where they're like, Ten- <laughs> they're like, I like <laughs> Zuko more than Aang, but I get why Katara chose Aang because every other guy that she's had like feelings for has turned out to be the uh, like not as good. So like, Aang is just plain right flat on his face, decent person all the way to his bones. Um, yeah, he's just a good, fun young man. He's a good who man. Cares about her. Yeah. And Zuko is a guy who, like, five, uh, like, a month before they met would have killed her on the spot. Yeah. Uh, but I love Zuko. Zuko's one of the best written characters in fucking animated yeah. things. The world of well, Avatar's great. Why is there no yeah. official, RP, like, tabletop RPG that takes place in the Avatar world? Because not everything needs to be a board game. Sometimes it just works better when... Yeah, but I'm saying, like... It, it stays by itself. I'm saying, like, that would be a fun world to do adventures in. Yeah. Man, Suki just kind of shows up in the final season, doesn't she? She sure does. <laughs> like, she's literally not there. They showed up to have an implication that yep. her and Sokka were fucking. They, and they it. were. <laughs> yeah. And did. And, and it's Zuko so weird that mine. fucking Korra... The, the, like, I like Korra a lot. I think it's a good show, and I think people talk too much shit about it because it's not as good as Avatar The Last Airbender, but, like, nothing is. it has a really weak first season where Korra is just I think the first season's good, but not great. Child. I think the second season sucks, but season three and four are fucking bomb. Yeah, it just sucks that you kind of have to watch those other two seasons. <laughs> I still think season one is quite good, but it's clear with mm. season one that it was the only planned season, and then two, three, and four were added on. Yeah, or I feel like there was a bunch of other things they were trying to do, and then uh, they were uh, then Nickelodeon was probably like, "That's too adult." Yeah, tone it back. The implications. The ending of season one's fucking ones. fantastic. It's all right. Double su- uh, murder suicide. Yeah. All right. Uh, that, that just, I just. I love Amon. Amon's a great villain. He's fine. Why was he wearing face paint under a mask, though? Was he? Yeah, he was. Uh, there's what he t- he takes off the mask and he shows his face is all disfigured. Oh, and then yeah, because he, he wanted to look like his water. face was all disfigured. Yeah, but why would he even take off the mask? Just in case. Eh. I don't know. He's a lame boy. <laughs> yeah, but um. Also, chi blockers way too fucking strong. But they in, were uh, in the original series too. It's just no, there's more don't. of them. They, 
No, there's like yeah, there's that one chick. Uh, Ty Lee. What's her name? Ty Lee. Ty Lee is uh, beats the shit out of everyone with her, with chi blocking. Yeah. But if you just don't get hit, but like those dudes, there was so many of them. But yeah, but like it's a martial art that you can teach. So why wouldn't you teach it to as many people as you want if you're trying to build an army? Yeah, I guess. Right. It just it makes sense. It's not like like chi blocking is an established thing. It's a, a thing you can learn. And in the twenties, when information became easier to share because of like all sorts of technological improvements, like why wouldn't One you second, share? You. Yeah. In the twenties. Yeah, Korra takes place is in the twenties. Is there 20s. a year in Avatar? Huh. Is there a year in the Avatar? No, like, but, uh, like, it's clear that uh, The Last Airbender takes place in the 1800s, like the mid-1800s, and Korra takes place in what is clearly meant to be the 20s. It's not that clear. Korra is more clear, but Korra's the 20s. Okay, fine. Alright, well. Sorry, I thought this was something that everybody knew. <laughs> No, it's not. I be guarantee if you went online, not everyone is saying it takes place in the 20s. I think it's just something that you think and that you came up with on by yourself, so you're saying it's canon. It's not, like, literally the year. I'm saying... It... I know, but you're... <sighs> Whatever. It's not worth it to just... We're going to go in circles. It's something... The, the way you said it made it... When you said the 20s, it sounds like you're talking about the actual time period of Avatar. I did not mean not. that. You're talking about the real world correlation. But it sounds like what you are doing is talking about a timeline that exists. No, sorry. 80, 80 years later or whatever it is. 60. 60 years 50. later. Something like, uh, something 50 like that. years. Katara had uh, her kids when she was like in her 20s and her kids are in their like 50s. And yeah, so it's, uh, I guess Legend it's like Korra. yeah, 50, 60 years later, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Because everyone's old. There's a lot It's of weird that Aang only lived to be like. Excuse me, like 80 something? 50. 50 something? Yeah, only like in his 50s. Well, technically 160, but you know. Yeah, but like. Uh, yeah, it's it's funny because. Like, that's what they said. Like, he died relatively young because Avatar's. Like, in the. They don't in the all lore, live to be super old. They do. Well, a lot of them do. The the pre uh okay the guy before him was uh, what whatever the fuck his name Roku yeah Roku was fucking old as shit yeah but he and he was killed but he was very old still yeah but like uh uh Kyoshi lived to like two hundred and sixty I thought Kyoshi was like four hundred like she was like the longest living Avatar she lived a long ass time I don't think they live normally they live that long Ang was sixty six yeah. Slash 176. Yeah. Um, I think Roku lived to like about 90. Uh, Roku, 70. 70, shit. Oh, he just yeah. didn't age well, good. Well, but he, he, no, he didn't. <laughs> well, okay. he ate, For a 70-year-old, he looked like a 70-year-old. <laughs> but he was killed. Yeah, he was murdered. He would have lived longer. Yeah. He was killed by his brother-in-law. His bestie. Yeah. Fire Lord, whichever was. Sozin. Kiyoshi, you were right. 230 at death. Bam! And so, I think the yeah, water guy Kiyoshi, lived pretty long, too. I'm trying to find her predecessor, if that's even fucking... The water guy, who was, like, served in Kur a time of peace. Kurok. And he just fucked all the time. Nope. The Avatar before Kiyoshi died at the age of 33. Oh, Tako the Face Stealer, maybe. Maybe he was like, the there's one with definitely the... people who live long, but it's not. Yeah. I'm. It's not people. People don't live forever. No, yeah. people don't live forever, but some people live a very long time. Uh, the previous Air Nomad Avatar, we don't know how old she was when she died because it just has her date of death. Yeah, and that's only because we know the her the, when the ones. guy was born. <laughs> yeah. Um. My thing with Korra, the only thing that I feel about that show that's completely inconsistent that like shows how things were planned differently is in season one 
Katara's old and she says like my brother and my friends are all long dead or whatever something like that like bro- my brother and yeah. my friends have all, a lot of them have died or whatever most of them are dead Top, pretty and then much Toph and husband. Zuko are alive in the later yeah. seasons so so just her brother and her husband yeah. are dead <laughs> just her brother and her husband like, maybe Suki's dead maybe, maybe Suki, like Suki. some other yeah like well, probably. I mean, she, but, but don't you think she'd be in the group text with Zuko and... <laughs> yeah, we don't Zuko even get to know Tom. how... Yeah, that's fucking... Sokka just died at some point. He just died of being dead. <laughs> he was... Okay, well, Sokka was either 74... Yeah. Or... I think he canonically died before Aang did. 86. Then never mind. I guess there's no clear. Yeah. Well, it says uh, it just says on the wiki. It says died between 158 and 170. Do you think Sokka is the father AG, of one of like Toph's kids? Because it's left relatively vague. I would like it. <laughs> I. But it's also kind of lame that he doesn't have any kids. Yeah. Like they don't have. There's no fucking Maybe like Suki died underwater young. tribe guys. Mm, nah. No. I don't want Suki to die either. I like Suki. I like the concept of... Um, I like them together. I like them together more yeah. than him and Toph. I'm just saying that since we don't know the fathering of either of her kids, I'd say 50-50 chance Sokka is one of yeah. them's dad. Toph just went out and got some dick one night. Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> That's how Taka it's always so- portrayed. So- she's such a Toph- bitch in the series. Toph? Just like walked into a bar one night, she's like, hmm, "Who wants I'm in it?" The mood stomps the floor with her bare ass feet, and then let the vibrations go through all the men in the bar and figured out the one with the best dick. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, "Hello, I'm Toph uh, Bayfront. I invented um, metal bending. I am the chief of police here. Bend my cervix, And also, please. I'm close friends with the Avatar. Bend my cervix." <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> Thank you for your cervix. Uh. <laughs> oh, there is. There, Lynn has a dad. Oh, Lynn has a dad? Yeah. Who was it? Oh, right. Yeah, I think they talk. They mention him once, but they don't mention the other one's dad. Um. Oh, they do have Sokka as a confirmed love interest. There's a dude named Satoru. He's in the comics. Oh, He's a love interest. fuck, I remember that. And then there is... And then Suyin has a dad separately as well. God damn, Toph, you... <laughs> pick one. <laughs> nah, you don't have to. No, they have different fathers from each other. I know her, her kids yeah, have two different fathers. But she has four love interests, one of them Sokka, so there's three, and the two. then there's two dads, and then there's that guy. So, who knows? Yeah. There's two kids... There's four potential fathers. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, in in the comics, I remember now, because I have the last Airbender comics. I have the first few. Uh, I have The Promise, The Search, and whatever the third one was. Uh, the Promise is cool. Uh, it involves, like, the founding of the area that would become Republic City, where it was, like, this was the first area that the Fire Nation took over, and so there's, like, a hundred years of history between them, and there's, like, a lot of sort of commingling of cultures, and so they were, like, let's kick the Fire Nation out, and they're, like, well, the Fire Nation people, there are a lot of people born here who they're, like, our grandparents or whatever, like, it's all become, like, this whole thing, so they're, like, okay, this will become Republic City, it's not associated with any nation. Um, yeah, they just took it from the Earth Kingdom, and then the that idiot with the bear, uh, Bossing Say, had like a grandchild, and she got mad about that. Yeah, um, in uh, and then in in the promise, the other sorry, the other facet of the promise that's really interesting is um, that Zuko says to Aang right at the end of the the series, they have a conversation where a- he says to Aang like. If you see me becoming like my father as a fire lord, kill me. Make me that promise. You cannot turn your back. And so it's about that. Um, yeah. Which is good. And then the search says what happens to Zuko's mom. Uh, it's kind of yeah, she underwhelming. Had a, a, she had a dude she liked before. Yeah. 
Sozin. Yep. And I went out there and was like, God damn, I want that puss. Yeah. <laughs> I want to give so you this puss, bro. She abandoned him, essentially. Yeah. Like, it's, like, kind of underwhelming. Like, I'd rather just not know. It's more interesting to me as a mystery, but whatever. It was worth a read. Well, she abandoned Azula. Fucking Zuko well, Azula was, like, was yeah, evil. my mom is... Well, no, Azula's mommy issues turned her evil. Yeah. And Zuko's daddy but, issues turned him evil and then good. Yeah. Well, he's like, I want to get the favor of my father. And then he was... And then Iroh was like, hey, maybe... Maybe my brother's kind of a dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> Iroh is fucking the best character. Yeah. I love him. There's no better character than General Iroh. Yeah. Who talks about a man who was like this bloodthirsty genius general. Yeah, what was his nickname like, again? It was like, like The Dragon of the West or something. Oh yeah, that's it. Something like that. Yeah. The Dragon of the West or something like that. Yeah. And it's cuz he did the thing where he blew the fire out of his nose. Uh, he is a uh, he's a Grand Lotus of the Order of the White Lotus. Yes, the White Lotus, dude. Honestly, who the f- turned out to suck? Yeah. Well, <laughs> in in you mean in Korra or in Jet? Yeah. yeah. He was the Dragon of the West. I think the Dragon of the East is his brother. Yeah. Um. That four part finale has like the six. Wow, he's actually the older brother. Yeah. Oh yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, I I figured based on how they look, yeah. but like that's weird that like, he got passed over probably because he didn't think they needed his to kid make died. The world when their dad died, his, his ki- kid had oh. died, and so he was. Oh, yeah. That's when he became the more peaceful guy because his kid died in war. Yeah, and he like at the at the war when they were trying to take back Bossing Say, but then they kept failing. Yeah. Uh. There are, oh. I think... Wait, there is the... Who the fuck is the Dragon of the East? There's only a Dragon of the West. Yeah. Maybe there's no other dragons. Maybe they're like, he's just... He's from the West. Because the Fire Lord... Uh, the Fire Nation is in the West. Mm, maybe. Did you ever see that thing where it's like the Avatar Earth is smaller than ours? That's fine. Yeah. They travel over it pretty quickly. Yeah, because they like tried to map the map that you see to a globe. And it's like... Unless there's a big hidden continent where on the back, it's a lot smaller than our Earth. There's a man. There's a lot of characters in Avatar who are just like, bro, I do not care for this war, and then they left, and then they were like, I'm just go around here. Yeah. Well, what I love about the fucking story of that is like, when you you meet all these different characters along the way of Avatar, like in season one and two, whatever, and then in season yeah. three, on the day of the Black Sun, they all show up. They're like, no, you've convinced us. We're fighting for you guys. And it's like, fuck yeah. And then it's like, you still lost with every friend you've made. And you're like, oh, yeah. fuck. How are they going to do that? beat this? Great show. I don't think I can yeah. I can say any more than that. Like, it's a great show. Yeah, it's just too good. Yeah. I, fuck, now I got to start watching it. I'm like, yeah. I used to watch that show every year. Yeah, so, well, now it's your time. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I do have one last uh, thing to talk about. Uh, yeah, go for it. I got nothing else. I started streaming Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Yeah. It's good. Did you tune in, Ian? I was at work. Oh. Did you tune in in the VOD, Ian? <laughs> no. Oh. He doesn't love. I don't me. really. I you. I think you. You maybe watch like the Phoenix Wright anime. I don't care. The anime the is not as good. Yeah, but like I was like, oh, it's alright. But the 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 fucking playing the game, the characters are so fun. Dick Gumshoe, what a man. Yeah. Miles Edgeworth, I made the joke on stream. The gayest lawyer in the t- in the country. Yeah, sure. In a good way, he can get it, Edgeworth. Once <laughs> he becomes good, at least. Yeah, sure. It's Naruto, uh, but instead like, of... Uh, I Shut up! <laughs> it's Naruto, but instead of fights, it's lawyer. It's it's, it's, ver- it's verbal fights, yeah. a.k.a. OBJECTION! <laughs> um, fuck. I'm trying to think of the show that actually... It's it's verbal fights, a.k.a. Naruto. <laughs> um, also, I love, I love the fake California. I know people are like, use Phoenix Wright as an example of bad California. localization, but I love it. Yeah, I watched a video about Yakuza... 
stuff yesterday, and they brought that up immediately. About the Phoenix Wright or about Yakuza? Because they were talking, it was talking about how in the early years of localized, like Japanese localized video games, is that you would get a bunch of like, they would it'd be like the game's clearly set in Japan, and then they'd be like, hmm, this is New York City, but they didn't do that in Yakuza. Yeah. But then there is like a lot of questionable like things people say, like just characters just sound straight up different. Yeah, like in the Yakuza early localizations, especially Yakuza One. Like, A, they just use sort of, like, dated language and a lot of swearing yeah. in the dub. Yeah, they swear all the time. It just doesn't work. Yeah. What I love you about... motherfucker, what do you think you're doing bumping into me? I'll be... Oh, although pardon I w- me. Although oh, I will you piece say of this. shit, dumb bitch. I will say this. Mark Hamill yeah. as Majima is amazing. Sure. <laughs> He's perfect. Who else could play Majima? No one. Yeah. Other than Majima. Like, it's just the Mark Hamill plays. and whatever Japanese actor does it. Those are the only two people who yeah. can do it. <laughs> sure. Because he runs Hopefully the line. Like, it's if not... Yakuza 7 gets a fucking localization, Mark Hamill, Mark Hamill bring, him bring him back. <laughs> I know he's too big now, but you gotta do it. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> nah, he still does tons of stuff. And that voice is easier for him to do than his Joker voice. Because it's, like, yeah. it's like deeper Joker. It's like closer to his real voice, but still kind of Joker. He just talks. Yeah. It's still got that yeah. sort of feel, though. Which is fair, because Majima is kind of Joker-esque in some ways. Except not an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> oh, kind of. Yeah. Who knows? Majima's <laughs> a weirdo. Tell me you couldn't see the exact same bomb-diffusing scene from 2, but with the Joker. Yeah. That's so funny. It's the funniest fucking thing. But, okay, Phoenix Wright localization, in case you don't know, they came up with an entire backstory as for why it's Japanese California. Like, it's like there's an entire backstory for it. Um, It's really funny. And it's more interesting than just taking place in Japan for me. Because it's like, it's like, it's California, but, like, X or Y historical event didn't happen, so there's just, like, a lot more Japanese culture in California. And oh, so, um, you know, yeah. the concentration camps the, Yeah, the intern- internment camps didn't happen, like, it's like this whole thing. Somebody, like, the localizer came up with it, and yeah. uh, they gave, because every character in Japanese has, like, a pun name, and so they all have different pun names. Um... Like Phoenix Wright, Dick Gumshoe, like yeah. Uh, the, what is the the other guy? It's um, Winston Payne. You know, like all, and all those names are all really good. Like Miles Edgeworth is a fake name. Like, and it's, but it's so like slaps. Mm. I don't even know what that character's name is in fucking Japanese. I know uh, Phoenix Wright's name is like Naruhudo Ryuichi or something like that. Like yeah, which is I see. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to find his fucking real name. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth is uh, Miles Edgelord. <laughs> name in other languages. Ryu, Riji Mitsurugi. Yeah. Wow, that's a boring name. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like doesn't slap the same at all yeah and there's Francisca well, von Karma yeah she's great anyway uh, tune in to twitch.tv slash the media hole for more Ace Attorney nonsense yeah I think I'm gonna try to play through the trilogy HD on there and then I want to move into maybe playing FF7 OG do it yeah do it you puss yeah would you would you be down to do a a stream where it's it's like remote so I just grab the the webcam footage of you from the Discord call and put you in the stream and we're both talking and I'm playing the game? I don't know what game is it. I, FF7 or any other no. game? I don't want to spoil myself on a 24-year-old game. Well, it's just you've also said that you wouldn't play it, so you could watch me play it in real time. No, and that's comment. not how that works. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, not how it works, Nathan. Okay. Sorry. I don't know. Choose a different game, then maybe. I don't know. We'll pick something. 
uh, Uniclear. <laughs> that's not. That's a fighting. Let's game. stream Uniclear. Uh, yeah, we'll stream our mediocre gameplay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, or I don't know. You play through <laughs> RE4 and I'll watch. Oh, uh, I need to get that game on my computer then. Uh, no, nah, fuck it. Because I don't. I, <laughs> Whatever. I don't have an Elgato. Uh, but yeah. Uh, if I think that's everything for the day, Ian. Unless you have that's something everything. else to talk about. No, I am out. I can't even tell what the fuck this is that you sent me, Ian. Uh, uh, you gotta click on it to make it big, so you can read it. Oh, Joe. Yeah, Doug Joe. Okay, I see yeah, it. I see Joe it. who? Joe Mama. <laughs> Got it. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to go fucking shave my head. God damn. Thank you for listening to the Media Hole podcast. We love you. Uh, you know, you can follow. Uh, if you want to listen to more, we're on all sorts of everything, including YouTube, youtube.com slash N8S comedy. You can catch every episode of this show, plus all kinds of stuff also from me and sometimes Ian. Uh, if you want to follow us on anything else, uh, for me, it's at the media hole on Twitter. It's twitch.tv slash the media hole. Uh, it's at the media hole on TikTok and on Tumblr. When your balls get stuck to your leg.tumblr.com. Change your name. Uh, if you want to find Ian, where can you find him? <laughs> Struggles V. Google it. Have fun. If you look him up, he's the biggest streamer on Mixer. Uh, <laughs> Ninja. No, you're you're the biggest streamer on uh, Facebook gaming. Oh, uh, fuck. There's another guy. <laughs> no, but it's you. You're bigger. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. I don't know. Whatever. I always try to come up with some sort of social media thing that Ian's good at. Uh, uh, Twitter. <laughs> yeah, find about everything at Struggles V. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for watching slash listening slash keeping up with it. This was episode thirty. I forgot to fucking say. Oh, <laughs> this was episode thirty. Oh my god, so many episodes. I love you. Uh, see ya. <laughs> see ya.